I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! competitively for over 15 years, and I'll never forget going to my local Books A Million to play with other kids, or going to a card shop for the first time. But there's one thing that has stayed true throughout the years, and that is that Yu-Gi-Oh! formats change, but the player base will always have their own favorite format. Players will also have their own thoughts on what Yu-Gi-Oh! formats are the best or the most healthy for the game. So in today's video, I aim to determine what is a healthy Yu-Gi-Oh! format, because spoiler alert, right now the format we're in, at the time of me making this video at least, is extremely healthy. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, AvriLR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain of that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher, the 1200 ladder. Hope y'all having a fantastic day. I really do appreciate all of the support. We have been super busy, but you know what? Tomorrow, or by the time you see this video, October 4th is my birthday, so be sure to drop a comment and hit that like and subscribe button, and even that ding-dong notification taco bell, notification bell for my birthday. That's all I ask. Or you can also go check out my book. Link in the description. All of the, well, excuse me, half of all the proceeds go towards the VHL Alliance to help raise awareness on Von Hippolyndau disease, which is what I was diagnosed with, and that's what my book is about. So be sure to go check out my book. Link is in the description. I think you will enjoy it very much, but I hope you're having a fantastic day. Thank you for all the support regardless. So let's break down what I mean by healthy or a toxic format. So I think most players will agree that when there's a lack of diversity or creativity, then that makes the current format that we're in toxic, right? If you want to know what a toxic Yu-Gi-Oh format would be, just look at 2013 Dragon Rulers, or more recently, if you want, a Shizu tier elements at full power. Those decks were insane and stood head and shoulders above all other decks in the game at that time. If you weren't playing those decks or a deck that was designed to beat said deck, then you were losing. And I'm sure people will comment and say, Avery, there is no diversity in Yu-Gi-Oh because everything is an archetype. And to those people, I say, clearly you haven't played the game for the better part of a decade because Yu-Gi-Oh has been this way for years. You know, gone are the days of good shit dot deck piles just doing well outside of things like, I guess, based, or as I called it on the channel, badass sexy engine decks, where it was just a pile of good cards. But when you look at the current format, there is, I would argue at least, somewhat, somewhere around 20, if not more decks that you could play right now and find success with. That's not a joke. You can look at pie charts and see it for yourself. Now, does that mean that suddenly your Gate Guardian deck or your Aromage deck can get you your regional invite? No, most likely not. However, if you build it right, there's a chance, especially if players aren't expecting your deck, or know how to play against it, you can do well. I mean, hell, look at Lithium 2300. He almost topped the YCS in Dorman with Monarchs, for God's sakes. So when you look at it factually, which is what I aim to do in this video, I personally believe that a healthy Yu-Gi-Oh! format is defined by how many different decks are in the pie chart at the top of at top events. Um, and I know that I'm saying personally, but if you're look at it, if you're looking at it from a factual standpoint, if you're looking at it by the idea of Yu-Gi-Oh is to get as many people into the game as possible, then the more diversity you have, the more decks that people can uh, go to to play, whether it's because they like the art, they like the lore, they like the whatever, that is very healthy for the game, which in turn causes more people to want to play, which creates a very healthy format. And no, I'm obviously not talking about your locals, your local format. I'm talking about when you look at the pie charts of like a YCS event, nationals, what have you. Those charts show you what the best decks are at that current moment in time in the game. You know, when you look at the, the little bar graphs from YCS Dortmund and you see like what decks had the most representation, the more different decks you see on there, the better. You know, if you look at these pie charts and over 50% is just one deck, like let's just say it's, it's unchained, over 50% is unchained, then that deck's considered tier zero and the only deck to beat in the room or play depending on how you look at it. Now, if you look at the pie chart and it's multiple different decks, you know, 2% Rescue A, 7% Runic, I'm just pulling numbers out of my ass, 10% Unchained, 5% Tier, 2% Flunder, so on and so forth, then that's a good way to show that the format is diverse and it shows you that there's a lot of different decks that you can play and do well with. And like I said, it's a good thing. The more diversity you have in the game, the more people are encouraged to get into the game. You, you know, you hear me and many others on YouTube say things like, 
you know, sell your collection at this point, or now's a great time to get into the game because things are cheap. And we say those things because of whatever's going on in the game at that time. You know, what whatever whatever is dictating it, whether it's the market or how diverse the format is, whatever, you know, whether now is a good or bad time to get into Yu-Gi-Oh! competitively. Casual play is its own thing. There's no point talking about that. You can play whatever fucking deck you want. I'm talking specifically about going to a regional or a YCS and aiming to do well or get your invite to nationals or even if you've just never played Yu-Gi-Oh! competitively and you want to give it a shot. You know, I had a buddy of mine who was thinking about picking up cards for his branded deck now that Lubellion's been reprinted and I'm like, Look, man, you need to wait to pick up Bice Steel Lubellion. You need to pick up anything because Age of Overlord is right around the corner. We don't know how well Branded's going to do. Branded really didn't do anything at YCS Dortmund from the, as far as I know. I don't even think it even got top 32, quite honestly, because there are just other better decks in the room. That's not to say that you can't play something like Branded Chimera, but like if you're not playing the Chimera cards, I feel like you're kind of just playing Branded wrong. So I told him, I'm like, hey, you need to hold off. But for someone like him, who doesn't really play you give that competitively, he just plays his Branded deck at Locals from time to time. Now is the perfect time if you're someone like him or even just plays maybe on EDO Pro or Dueling Book from time to time that now's a good time to start going to events and playing because cards are fairly cheap. Things that you need aren't going to cost you an arm and a leg. I mean, if you really wanted to spend a lot of money on a deck, maybe you would be spending $500 on Rescue Ace. And Rescue Ace isn't even all that great. It's pretty good, but like it's not all that great, even with the Dio Bellstar stuff, in my humble opinion. So the more decks you see in that pie chart, the better the game is. And yeah, there's going to be people that say tier zero formats are fun and they have their own merit. There are still people to this day that try to tell me <laughs> the Ashizu tier element mirror match is skillful somehow. Um, and that Dragon Ruler format in 2013, the mirror matches are skillful somehow. Um, I still don't see it, but you know, that's, that's a whole nother topic for another day to be quite honest. Um, and hell, I mean, I made a video talking about why cash tier is one of my favorite decks of all time. That was back when it was at full power, obviously, but still it became one of my favorite decks of all time. And I still really enjoy it to this day. And again, everybody is different when it comes to formats. You know, to me, one of my favorite formats, actually my favorite format of all time is September 2009 format. And that's because I played my burial dad deck that my dad found on the 2009 Yu-Gi-Oh! DS Stardust Accelerator video game. He was playing against somebody online and they were playing this like Burial Dad deck that used three Necro Gardener and three Barrel from the different dimension. The opponent tries to attack direct. I banish a Necro Gardener. They're like, oh, you have no more Necro Gardeners. Attack directly. And I go, activate Barrel from the different dimension, put back three Necro Gardeners, banish one, negate the attack. And then if I don't have any Necro Gardeners, then of course my dad being the burn player he was even back then, he teched in one copy of Magic Cylinder. That won me so many games back in the day. They try and attack for game. I don't have any Necro Gardens. I'm like, okay, Magic Cylinder, GG. Uh, it, was, it was such a fun time. Very fun format. There were still things wrong with that format, like Crush Card Virus being a thing. Um, and then there are other people who will say, no, nah, 2013 format or Hat format, Edison format is my favorite format. To each their own. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, let me know what format is your favorite, and let me know what you think is a healthy Yu-Gi-Oh! format. Do you think right now it's toxic because there are too many decks? Some people think that toxic Yu-Gi-Oh! formats are when there's too many decks. Some people like tier zero formats because then you're just trying to beat one deck. So let me know what you guys think about that and more in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.